Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from the lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for subscribing. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, underneath here, uh, there is a subscribe link. Uh, please do subscribe there as well. Let's go ahead and get into the news for this episode. Starting off over at eWeek, Tech Pioneer Shuttleworth demos OpenStack on Linux. Mark Shuttleworth, the founder of Ubuntu Linux and its lead commercial sponsor, Canonical, is passionate about OpenStack and his company's role in it. In a dramatic keynote presentation at the OpenStack Summit, uh, Shuttleworth performed technology demonstrations and made multiple new technology initiative announcements. Nearly 70% of OpenStack public clouds run on Ubuntu, he said, and uh, he performed a number of live installations of OpenStack on Ubuntu on stage. At the core of Ubuntu's Linux technology is an orchestration system known as Juju, which has been enabling Ubuntu cloud deployments since the Ubuntu 11.10 Linux release in 2011. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. From PC World, a uh, Linux group has built a 64-bit Android KitKat for ARM developers. Google is being tight-lipped about when the 64-bit version of Android will be released. But Linux development group Linaro has built a version of the open source operating system so mobile applications can be written and tested by manufacturers and developers rushing to catch up with Apple. Uh, Android smartphones and tablets could be faster with 64-bit hardware and also carry more memory. Device makers are feeling pressure to catch up with Apple, which released a 64-bit processor with their iPhone 5S uh, a number of months ago. And... Um, the uh, Apple jumped ahead of the competition by putting its 64-bit A7 processor in the 5S and iPad Air. Lenaro's Android builds are not full-fledged distributions of the OS, but are system builds meant for developers to write and test applications. So if you are a system developer, definitely check this out if you are looking for 64-bit uh, uh, Android for KitKat. From ITWorld.com, Microsoft Office might becoming to Linux. One of the biggest gripes by users coming to Linux from Windows is that Microsoft Office is not available for Linux. That might be changing according to the Adventures in OpenSUSE Linux blog, but is Microsoft Office for Linux really necessary? Or are people who stu still use Microsoft Office living in the past? You know, I don't know. Uh, in the business world, you still kind of have to have Microsoft Office. At home, you can get by with OpenOffice. There's a no Star Office. There's a number of open source uh, uh, Office suites that will, that will work for you just fine. But in the business world, Microsoft Office, especially with the DocX format, is kind of the standard right now. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. Anyway, uh, pretty interesting, though. If you run Linux, you may be able to get Microsoft Office. How about that? From uh, semiaccurate.com, a new Red Hat Linux branch pops up in a demo. Semiaccurate just spotted a new unannounced, unreleased version of Red Hat Linux during a recent event. What is this new version and what does it do? Well, that's to be discovered. From arstechnica.com, the Navy is giving its helicopter drones a Linux upgrade. The systems uh, used to fly the MQ-8 Fire Scout, the robotic helicopter developed by Northern, Northrop Gumman for the U.S. Navy's littoral combat ships, ships are about to get an upgrade, one that's based on the Linux operating system. Raytheon has been awarded a $15.8 million contract to deploy a new version of the vertical takeoff and landing unmanned air vehicle tactical control system, VTUAV TCS. Boy, that's a mouthful. That takes the operator's console off its legacy Sun Microsystems Solaris 8 platform and brings it in line with military standards for drone control platforms, allowing it to be used with other compatible unmanned aircraft. So pretty cool. Definitely check it out. 
from Muktware, uh, XCOM, Enemy Unknown Linux entry surfaces in the Steam database. After being finally released for the Android platform, XCOM, Enemy Unknown, finally conquered all distribution platforms. Now it seems that Fire Access has turned their attention to colonizing the sub-platforms available to PC users, which is Linux, the last frontier, the last frontier till universal presence. According to a recent edit a few days in the Steam database, it seems XCOM Enemy Unknown is all set to move in to Linux through Steam for Linux. So if you're looking forward to playing that game on Linux, good news. You may be able to sooner than you think. From MarketWatch, Oracle announces OpenStack support for Oracle Linux and Oracle VM. Uh, this is part of the whole uh, OpenStack uh, world that's going on. Oracle uh, today introduced a technology preview of an OpenStack distribution that allows Oracle Linux and Oracle VM users to work with the open source cloud software. This provides customers with additional choices and interoperability while taking advantage of the efficiency, performance, scalability, and security of Oracle Linux and Oracle VM. The distribution is delivered as part of the Oracle Linux and Oracle VM Premier support offerings at no additional cost. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. We'll see you then. Bye.